I'm having a good day today. Got quite a good stack of these panels here. <laughs> look what look what I got. These are all kilns. Like really old awesome kilns. And like, you know, obviously I'm not gonna be using electric on this. Y'all know what I'm doing. But uh that boy bad boy right there, that's that's coming home with me. Let's find out. Now we're on to something. It's going in there now. So, the last clip I showed you guys, it looked just about like it does right there. Nothing's really changed except for that right there. So that's where the fuel and the air is going to go. We're going to have a pipe that comes out just a little bit at a 45 degree angle and up, you know, about maybe a foot. Just at a little bit of an angle, then taper it back off and come out this way. Put a blower right here. That little bit of angle I got just before the bottom of it, I'm going to drill a hole and put my oil feed. That way the oil kind of falls from the top of the pipe towards the bottom of the pipe at the same time the air is hitting and at the same time it's going to be hitting that joint and kind of getting a little kick. So it'll shoot the oil in there, should help atomize it just a little bit, I'm hoping. If not, it doesn't matter because it should atomize just fine when it goes through that. So there's the burner I got set up. The welds are crappy because that stuff is super thin and it's probably going to melt the first time I fire it up. But it might not because it's got a lot of air moving through it. So what we got here is a bunch of crap cobbled together, really horrible welds. Uh, Believe it or not, on the low, that welder right there will not turn down low enough. Uh, the trick I was using to make it work is turn it all the way down and turn the wire speed way up. <laughs> and just jab it in there and just try to blob some metal in there before it melts. So yeah, the air and the fuel will come through there, it'll burn a lot, get hot and stuff. The inside of this should turn red and I should be able to melt aluminum. This is going to be a way more efficient setup than the uh, beer keg barrel that I got that's actually at the landfill right now. It used to be set up in my backyard. This is going to be way more efficient because one, it's sealed and insulated really, really good. Two, it's got a lot more nozzle to atomize in. Now, I've watched a lot of oil burner videos. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out the oil burner channel, check that out. I guess combustion inside the nozzle is bad because of the carbon up and it'll probably just clog all these holes up. But either way, you know, it'll work for a little while. This is still the experimental stage. So I was wanting combustion inside of that pipe with fire shooting out of every one of them little holes. But I don't think that's, that might not happen. That might happen. I don't know. Like I said, I'm just trying stuff and I'm going to see what happens. But regardless, this thing should use less than half of the oil of that other furnace and do three times the work. Uh, now what I'm planning on doing on the bottom, probably put a piece of plate steel down there or use some of these metal discs and put four metal discs, weld some legs on them about the, a little bit taller than that right there, not much taller, so I want to keep everything down low. That way I can fit big crucibles in there. And then, uh, like I said, I'll have four metal discs, weld some legs to them, put a big piece of plate still up here, and probably uh, drill a bunch of holes in it. That's what I plan to do later on. For now, I'll probably just, I mean, the crucibles I'm using, I could fit two of them over there, and I could fit one, two, three, four, five, maybe six more over here. I mean, I could put everything I'm melting and then some in here. With, or with my crucibles, so. Uh, this thing is rated at 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how hot I'm gonna get it. I hope I don't melt the bricks inside of it. 
because apparently you can do that because there's some damage right there where the heating element has melted the uh, whatever kind of fire brick these are. There's a little bit right there, then there's another spot right there. Right, I think that's actually, no, that's melted. So I know it's possible to tear this up. So wherever the fire wants to shoot out of this, like I said, I have metal underneath it and probably put it, you know, I got more of these porcelain or whatever these are. I don't know what they are. Some kind of weird brick. They're lightweight as hell, but they're brittle. I'll probably put some of that underneath the metal plate to kind of make a barrier. I don't want fire and a bunch of heat blowing on any of this. I just want it to be heated. So there's a lot of figuring out stuff to do. I'm probably going to screw up, but I don't know. It can't be that hard. <laughs> I'll figure it out. But yeah, I figured the furnace out the landfill, use that to process the metal. You've seen that run. If you haven't, I'll probably put a link in the description below. But you just drop whole engine blocks and raw materials in there, whatever you want to drop in there. It melts everything through the bottom, except for the stuff that melts at higher temperatures like the steel and the screws and the, you know, it'll melt the copper off the uh, coils on the lawnmower engine, so you got to watch that, but it ain't that big a deal. It's pretty easy to separate molten copper from molten aluminum, but yeah, that melts down through the furnace. The crap stays behind, the good stuff goes through the furnace, it falls into a bowl of water or a pan of water or whatever I got in there, and I make it into pellets. And after that, I put them pellets into a crucible, clean all the crap off of them, get it real good and pure, and then I make bars like that right there. I've been using these things as wheel chocks, they're all over my damn garage. But I've been making wheel chocks out of them, pretty much, because I haven't been able to sell them anywhere because I haven't really tried. But Pretty much well I could take a truckload of aluminum and a few hours later have it turned into just a few of them bars. And it takes, I mean, I've I got enough aluminum to fill this building. It all needs to run through these furnaces. <laughs> so I'd like to stockpile just a whole bunch of them bars. And then one day I might need some money and I'll be able to scrap them. They're pure aluminum, you know, or pure enough aluminum. I don't know how pure they are. They're pretty daggone clean, though. I mean, they don't have any slag in them, don't have any dross in them. And that's just playing around. I mean, that was uh, window frames. I made these out of window frames, like on your house. I mark every, every bar I melt down, I mark what it was made out of. So I know what, roughly what kind of aluminum it is. But anyway, I'm gonna quit rambling. There's that scary looking thing. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to be using this in the shop because, for one, gassing off aluminum is not healthy for you, especially if there's zinc in it. Two, this thing's going to get really hot and I don't want to burn my shop down. So, I got to figure out how to move this. I like to never got it in the truck. It wasn't easy. <laughs> I didn't want to use machinery to load it, so I hand loaded that damn thing in the truck by myself.